So I wanted to talk to you about the collections documents and what we discussed in class the other day. Keep in mind this whole unit is based around the idea that we're looking at Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail. If you need to go back and look at that, there's copies in my class and in the English class. But we're trying to focus on different elements from U.S. history that lead to Dr. King drafting this letter and coming up with the ideas that he's asking for from the local government in Birmingham and also from the state government in Alabama and from the federal government. So all of this, uh, you are in the middle of a unit. Uh, one of the projects that's part of that unit is your recording piece. So don't forget, you do need to record the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. You do not have to memorize it. You do need to record it uh, and do that inside of Flipgrid. It shouldn't take uh, too long. The uh, link shall be posted, should be posted in Canvas. If it's not, go ahead and get back to me. So what we talked about in class was the 14th Amendment, and I read it out loud, and so here it is. Uh, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. So the first question you might be asking yourself is, what makes a person a U.S. citizen? This little chart tells you that. So one way you can be a U.S. citizen is by uh, birthright through blood or citizenship through blood. That means either your mother or your father, doesn't have to be both, just one or the other, was actually a U.S. citizen at the moment of your birth, which instantaneously makes you a U.S. citizen, no matter where you're born. A couple of uh, examples that go with this, like, I'm a U.S. citizen even though I was born in Spain, in a Spanish hospital with Spanish doctors. My mother, was a, my mother is a U.S. citizen. She was at the moment of my birth. And my adopted parents are U.S. citizens as well. So in that instance, I was born from a U.S. citizen, therefore, I am a U.S. citizen. If only my father uh, had been a U.S. citizen and not my mother, still would have worked out the same way. Uh, examples that you can see with this that, that uh, feed into this, not having to be born inside the country, are um, President Barack Obama and Senator John McCain, both of which ran for president in 2008, both of which were not born in a U.S. state. Um, President uh, Obama was actually born in Hawaii before Hawaii became a state, so it was a territory. Uh, his mother is a U.S. citizen, and so therefore he is a U.S. citizen no matter what. And Senator John McCain was actually born in the Panama military zone or canal zone, which is outside the United States. Again, both of his parents are U.S. citizens. His, uh, his father was a U.S. admiral, and, uh, and his mother was a U.S. citizen the moment he was born. He was a U.S. citizen, too. That's how that works. The other way is by being born inside the United States or inside of a U.S. territory. So if you're actually born in New Mexico, if you're born in Puerto Rico, if you're born in Alaska, if you're born in Florida, the Keys, I mean, like wherever you're born that's owned by the United States, you are a U.S. citizen, even if neither of your parents are a U.S. citizen. Now, we're one of the few countries where that applies. Um, that is a modern idea. Most countries end up being that your parents had to be a citizen if they were not a citizen and you wanted to become a citizen, you ended up in the third category, which is the one at the bottom. And this is the one where you move to the U.S. and you apply to become a citizen. This is called naturalization, and there's a government process that you go through. And then at the end, you take a test, you apply, a judge, a federal judge says yes, and you are a U.S. citizen. Um, typically, that's the whole process. So that's how people become U.S. citizens. So if, for instance, in your lifetime, it's entirely possible, but the United States goes into space, has a lunar base, and a woman gives birth to a child on the moon, and that woman is a U.S. citizen, instantaneously, that, that child, even though they were born on the moon, is a U.S. citizen. Now, the second part for the 14th Amendment is stating this. So it's saying all of that about like, you are a U.S. citizen, therefore you fall under the rules of what may, of the of a U.S. state, or you fall under the rules of the federal government if you're a U.S. citizen, guaranteed. The second part, which begins down here, goes into what that means. So here we go. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, when we watched the Selma movie, and it talked about Dr. King 
or it showed Dr. King talking to the president of the United States and saying, we can't wait any longer. What he's trying to say is that the state of Alabama was knowingly depriving people of their rights. They were knowingly depriving people of their privileges. So at that time, if you were over the age of 21 and a U.S. citizen, you had the right to vote. In the state of Alabama and many other states, that right was being denied. So they were pushing, Dr. King was pushing and saying, poll taxes, where you have to go and pay a tax just to vote at the polls, or you have to be registered or know someone who is registered to register you. All of those infringements are taking away or bridging the privileges of those citizens. The other question is, well, what happens if a state actually gets in the way of your rights? Well, then what happens is that you have this next part, which is the due process. This is where Dr. King, using his knowledge and experiences, begins to openly protest and engage the newspapers, news agencies, and the public in an understanding of what's going on. And then through that process, it puts political pressure on the President of the United States at the time and Congress to actually change the laws and make it so that it was directly illegal for any state to do what they were doing by infringing or taking away people's right to vote. So we see there that whole process that we go through that. And again, this applies to anybody who's a U.S. citizen at all times. Now, here are the questions that inside of Canvas you should go ahead and um, answer. So again, how is the 14th Amendment an example of citizens holding each other accountable? It shows that and talks about that. Uh, we, you know, just so you understand, uh, 14th Amendment set up the changes that Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, wanted. It took 100 years, but they got there. And then the last one is, how is the 14th Amendment an example of advocacy? You know, if you need to, feel free to go back and look at the 14th Amendment. This is just Section 1. You don't have to look at the other sections that deal with military and debt that, that are responsible with other things, just this core amendment section. Now, once you've gone in, answer these questions in Canvas, and submitted them, I'd like for you to take some time and really think about the other part of our project. So the first part of our project is going into Flipgrid and recording the preamble to the Constitution. The second part of the project begins here, and this is where we're going to take the 14th Amendment, you as a student, and you're going to create a product. Notice I don't say a poster. Notice I don't say a picture. Notice I don't say anything. It's I say a product because it really should be up to you. You know, you are deciding you are making it your own. I want you to do something that reflects the ideas of the 14th Amendment, like really puts into action what it's saying. So over here to the side, back during the summertime or during the fall, I took section one of the 14th Amendment, copied it, and put it into a spark, uh, a spark post and just made a simple sticker. But it doesn't reflect the ideas of it. You know, granted, I made it look pretty. I took one of those broadside pictures that has the Constitution in the background. You can see the we, the, the people, the preamble part at the top there. But it doesn't tell you what it does. And then I also made a second one. I made it into a square. So I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll do that. But again, it's not telling people the action stuff. What I want to do is don't just make a copy of the text. Give it action. Show something that tells people what to do. So over here, during the election, I tried to make social media stickers that told people why they should go vote. You know, you should go vote because there are parts of the Constitution that say you don't have your vote denied. It shouldn't be abridged. You are a citizen. So over here, I had these, and I posted them in social media during the election process all of last year. Also over here, I have the First Amendment, and I try to say, don't just have these privileges. Don't just have the privilege to grievance the government or speak your voice or go ahead and consume media or create newspapers. Don't just think about religion, but like actually go out and protect your right by choosing to use those rights, like doing something that engages the right itself. What does that look like for you? The 14th Amendment is talking about advocating, trying to make sure that no state ends up depriving any person of life, liberty, or property. What does that look like to you? That no state denies you due process. What does that mean to you? What does that look like to you? Whatever format you want to create it in, again, it's up to you. But you're going to go ahead and make it. 
it'll be due after spring break, but we're going to have time in class over a couple different days, and then we're going to kind of present them within a small group. All right? I hope this makes sense. If not, drop me an email or question, and we'll see what we've got. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button there on the right, or click on the video above to see one of the other tutorials I've made. Again, this is Brian Wilson. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.